13 years ago, a white woman named Nita adopted five black children after her best friend Elisa passed away. The promise Nita made that day was a commitment she took seriously, though she never could have anticipated how profoundly these children would change her life. Nita was sitting at Elisa's hospital bedside, the sterile smell of disinfectant filling the room. Elisa's once vibrant face was now pale, her skin sallow from the toll the illness had taken. The low hum of the machines was the only sound in the otherwise still room. Nita gently held Elisa's hand, her heart heavy, knowing the inevitable was near. Nita, Elisa whispered, her voice hoarse and labored. I need you to take care of my children when I'm gone, all five of them. The request hit Nita like a tidal wave. She sat there momentarily stunned, the gravity of the words sinking in. Elisa, five kids? That's a lot to ask, Nita stammered, trying to wrap her head around what her friend was asking. Nita was single, focused on her career, with no children of her own. She loved Elisa's kids, but being a parent to five, that was an entirely different reality. I know, Nita, I know it's a lot, Elisa said, tears welling in her eyes, her voice barely a whisper, but I don't trust anyone else. You've always been there for me, and my kids adore you, please. I don't have anyone else. The desperation in Elisa's voice pulled at Nita's heartstrings. They had been friends for so long, weathering life's ups and downs together. Nita thought of all the memories they had shared, the laughter, the secrets, the unwavering support. She remembered the children, the joyful chaos they brought into Elisa's life, but taking on the responsibility of five young lives? Nita felt panic rise in her chest. What about their dad? Nita asked, grasping at straws. Elisa shook her head weakly. He's not in the picture anymore. And you know that, she said, her eyes reflecting a lifetime of pain. I'm so scared, Nita. I need to know my kids are going to be okay. The weight of the request was suffocating, but how could she say no to her dying best friend? With trembling hands, Nita squeezed Elisa's frail fingers and nodded. Okay, she whispered, her voice thick with emotion. I'll take care of them, Elisa, I promise. Elisa's face softened, relief washing over her features. Thank you, she whispered, closing her eyes. Thank you so much. Nita stayed by Elisa's side until the very end, holding her hand, her heart breaking with every shallow breath her friend took. When Elisa finally passed, the promise Nita had made loomed large. She was now the legal guardian of five children, and her life would never be the same again. In the days following Elisa's passing, Nita found herself in a whirlwind of paperwork, meetings, and logistical challenges. She had to uproot her entire life to accommodate the five young children she had promised to care for. Johnny, the eldest at just five years old, was quiet and withdrawn as Nita packed up their belongings from Elisa's home. His big brown eyes, so much like his mother's, looked at Nita with a mixture of confusion and sadness. Where's mommy? He asked, his voice small and shaky. Nita knelt down to his level, her own heart breaking as she explained. Mommy's in heaven now, Johnny. She's watching over you from up there, and she asked me to take care of you and your brothers and sisters. She pulled him into a gentle hug, feeling his little body stiffen in confusion. Johnny didn't cry, but his eyes were brimming with unshed tears. He simply nodded, brave for a boy so young. The younger children, four-year-old twins Sam and Max, two-year-old Lily, and baby Daisy were too young to fully understand what was happening. They cried for their mother, their familiar home, and the life they once knew, leaving Nita to comfort them with hugs and soft words. The first night in Nita's home was a storm of emotions. The children were frightened and confused by their new surroundings. Johnny, who had always been the most mature, sat silently in a corner, holding his favorite book. The twins clung to each other, wide-eyed and whimpering, while Lily threw tantrums, her little fists pounding the floor in frustration. Baby Daisy cried inconsolably, her wails echoing through the small house as Nita rushed from one child to the next, trying to soothe them. By the time she finally got all five children to sleep, Nita collapsed onto her bed, overwhelmed by the enormity of her new reality. How was she going to manage this? She had never been a mother before, and now she was responsible for five grieving children. Fear gnawed at her as she lay awake, staring at the ceiling, 
wondering if she had made a mistake by agreeing to Elisa's final request. The days that followed were a blur of chaos. Nita had to learn how to manage the children's schedules, comfort them when they cried, and make sure they felt safe in their new environment. The grief in the house was palpable, and it seemed to affect each child differently. Johnny, always stoic, rarely spoke about his feelings, while the twins frequently burst into tears at the slightest reminder of their mother. Lily's tantrums became more frequent, and baby Daisy, still too young to understand, clung to Nita constantly. But slowly, Nita began to see small changes. She made it a point to create special moments with each child, trying to bring some sense of normalcy to their lives. She baked cookies with the twins, who would giggle as they snuck bites of cookie dough. She read bedtime stories to Lily, her little voice finally calming as she drifted off to sleep. She held baby Daisy close, rocking her gently when the sadness felt too overwhelming. One evening, as Nita tucked the twins into bed, one of them whispered, Aunt Nita, do you think mommy can see us from heaven? Nita's heart ached at the question, but she smiled softly and sat down on the edge of the bed. Yes, sweetie, I believe she's watching over you every single day, and I think she's so proud of how brave you've all been. The twins nodded, their small hands clutching the blankets as they settled into sleep. As the months passed, the grief in the house lessened bit by bit, though it never completely went away. Nita set up a small memory corner in the living room, filled with pictures of Elisa and little mementos the children could visit whenever they wanted. Often, she would find one of them sitting there, lost in thought, holding one of Elisa's old scarves or staring at a photograph of her smiling face. Johnny, as the eldest, seemed to carry the heaviest burden. He often tried to take on more responsibility than a five-year-old should. One day, Nita found him in the kitchen, struggling to make sandwiches for his siblings. She knelt down beside him and gently touched his arm. Johnny, you don't have to do this all by yourself, she said softly. He looked at her with wide, tear-filled eyes. But I promised mom I'd take care of everyone, he whispered, his voice filled with the weight of his own grief. Nita's heart broke for him, but she smiled warmly and hugged him. Your mom would want you to be happy, Johnny. You don't have to take care of everyone on your own. We're a team, okay? We'll take care of each other. For the first time in weeks, Johnny smiled, a small but genuine smile. It was a turning point for both of them. From that moment on, the children began to open up more, sharing their feelings, laughing together and letting Nita into their hearts. They still missed their mother, but they were healing, and Nita was becoming the mother they needed. Years later, on a quiet evening, Johnny, now a young man, handed Nita an envelope. She opened it, her hands trembling, and inside were the deed papers to her house, paid off by the children. Her eyes filled with tears as she looked at Johnny, who smiled shyly. We wanted you to have something of your own, a place where you could finally rest and enjoy life. Overwhelmed, Nita pulled him into a tight embrace. You didn't have to do this, she sobbed, her voice thick with emotion. I was just doing what any mother would do. Lily, now a young woman, stepped forward, her own eyes brimming with tears. No, Mom, you went above and beyond for us. You gave us a home, love, and a future. This is our way of saying thank you. As the family stood together, wrapped in each other's arms, the sunset bathed them in a golden glow. It was a moment they would cherish forever, a testament to the power of love, sacrifice, and the unbreakable bond of family. That evening, they gathered around the dinner table, sharing stories, laughter, and memories. Nita looked around at her children, now grown, and felt her heart swell with love and pride. The story highlights themes of legacy, compassion, and the impact of sacrifice. Nita's journey from doubt to fulfillment is heartwarming as her children now give back to others in need, just as Nita had once done for them. Their shared memories, laughter, and plans for the future reinforce the strong bond they share, culminating in a moving reflection on the love and growth that transformed their lives. The closing invitation to watch another heartwarming story continues to engage the audience emotionally, encouraging them to stay connected with similar narratives.